Hello my soccer universe, finally the review for what happened in Western Europe over the past weekend but yeah we had a pretty big game yesterday that I wanted to get in as well so that we have it all whole and round although uh, France was already done uh, Saturday evening Portugal also got done soon but it was all about La Liga and I think the main story is snow chaos in La Liga uh, it had an effect uh, there was one game was postponed, another game uh, was called to be, uh, was supposedly close to being called off, or Real Madrid at least claims it should have been called off, and so on and so forth. So yeah, there are quite some uh, interesting uh, events surrounding its snow chaos. I think uh, I heard it is snow wise this was the most in over 50 years or something like that absolutely crazy to think about it and i usually i mean we have a lot of snow out but i usually say when i talk about this yeah let's talk about warmer climates and then they have snow chaos there too so yeah uh that's the main headline um i want to add that was an absolute bonkers game between sevilla and real sociedad that we will talk about in league uh lyon comes back late to secure the winter title and in Portugal everything remains the same but they will be about to get something good there too very soon. Uh, let's look at La Liga. Um, it started out with Villarreal completely destroying uh, Celta. I mean in 30 minutes they already scored four goals. It was uh, no uh, Iago Aspas and so on but still uh, I thought Celta was on a good uh, roll and the last two games are uh, really dis disappointing and we are uh, underlining, yeah, um, we may want to challenge for the Champions League or at least want to play in Europe but Champions League for sure. Moreno, Gomez, Parejo and Nino and I think there were many um, uh, defensive errors by Vigo in there as well. Let's talk about the crazy uh, Sevilla Real Sociedad game. Um, a game that I joined unfortunately a little bit late and then I saw already, I, th I think in the second half, uh, but I needed to rewatch the first uh, 15 minutes because that was the craziest thing that you will ever see. It was reminiscent of the famous City Spurs semi uh, quarter final in the Champ Champions League two years ago. Um, and the Ziri gives Sevilla uh, a lead in the fourth and then right off the kickoff the ball comes back Diego Carlos, uh, Diego Carlos wants to play it back to the goal, goalkeeper and lobs him, puts it into his own net uh, in the fifth minute, it was right off the kickoff. But Sevilla come back, seven, seventh minute, take the lead again. Seven minutes later Isaac uh, after Oyar Sabal assist gets the equalizer, 40 minutes played 2-2. Two, two. The game uh, then did not live up to its start in terms of scoring, but there were so many chances on both sides. I mean, uh, I think Real Sociedad uh, hit twice the woodwork in the second half, uh, but also Sevilla had numerous chances, namely Suso, that should have been converted. This game could have gone any scoreline above this 3-2, got the 3-2 right off of the kickoff of the uh, second half uh, through an Enesiri again, but this could have really gone any which way. I think if this would have ended 5-4 Sevilla, I think Sevilla deserved to win. Would have been uh, fully deserved. Highly entertaining game between two uh, sides where Real Sociedad you would expect it. Not necessarily Sevilla, I have to say, but yeah, for once Sevilla was entertaining. Then I was really looking forward to Atletico Madrid against Athletic Club. No, because of snow, forget about it, it's not going to be played. Okay, which causes a lot of scheduling chaos uh, within uh, La, La Liga because uh, it's not very clear when this game can or will be played. Um, I saw only the goals from Granada against Barcelona, but you know, two goals by Griezmann, one by Messi, I'm wearing Barcelona. It looked fluent, it looked happy in many ways. Messi looked ha ha happy again. I mean, they had now three away wins in, in, in a row and Barcelona starts looking like something. Yes, Kuman made a few changes. It is now more sensible for our formation, more closer to the 4-3-3 that uh, we use from Barcelona. Um, also, I think Dembele helps Barcelona. If he can stay fit, this would, it would definitely be an improvement for Barcelona to have uh, in there because he definitely uh, 
helped kind of to solve the sort of the Griezmann and Messi chaos. And the two were co co combining with, 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 with each other as well. And Messi scoring, even, uh, I think he scored a free kick goal and another of his typical goals. So yes, uh, this looks like something. It's a little bit too late, I think, to make a serious title challenge, as we'll see. But at least we have our we have something resembling Barcelona back. Let's see. If they can keep it up, we always have to say that. Elections are coming up soon too there. Then uh, Osasuna Real Madrid. That was a rather uh, flat performance by Real Madrid. Um, and it ends in a goalless draw on a pitch that was really characterized by snow. Uh, you know, you had some snow pat patches there, but I think the pitch all over, over was, what was right. I think what uh, Madrid was complaining is the travel conditions that they had to go into, that this game should never have played. Um, I think that all, from what I hear, it was actually sensation that also sooner could get the pitch in such a good count condition, uh, given the, serious, the situation in Spain. But yeah, it looked a lot like a game that you would have in February in Germany or Austria, then a Spanish league game. And clearly they were not very happy playing there and yeah, nil nil. Uh, Real Madrid after having, you know, some decent performances now again, one of those where you don't know where it's come, 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 come from, but they always sprinkle them in. And as we'll see, this helps Atletico a whole lot. Now the rest of the games from this round, I honestly did not see much. Uh, Valencia gets a big win at the Real Valladolid, I mean getting them a little bit out of trouble again. Um, Getafe a 3-1 at Elche is also there, there was also one that was postponed, but was played then on Monday. We had yesterday two makeup games, uh, one was from round 4, Granada beating Osasuna 2-0, uh, yeah, both goals before the half, and then of course the big one, probably the biggest match of uh, this whole batch between Atletico Madrid and Sevilla. And this was vintage Atletico. Um, yes, it was freaking cold, minus seven, but Atletico um, takes that. Yeah, we're gonna defend. We're gonna defend, defend, defend. The first time they go up, it was a uh, really nice slip uh, ball played out to Trippi, who puts it back to Correa, who takes it with his uh, right and shoots with the left into the net, one nil. Sevilla could not really answer there, and the game was kind of so plodding along until Marco Llorente in the 76th plays it to Saul, puts it into internet 2 0. Then two scares for uh, um, Atleti because Sevilla had two big chances one hitting the post, the second one, the first one was shot all over the bar where you really have to say this needs to go in. But Atletico Madrid with an Atletico like performance getting the win 2 0 uh, and really separating themselves from the rest already. So if we look now at, at, at the standings, Atletico Madrid should have been only one game behind now because one was Popol is still two games behind. Two games less Real, than Real Madrid and Bar Barcelona, but they have a four point cushion. Uh, take uh, six more and it's a 10 point cushion. You see it already, Atletico Madrid is odds on favorite to win this champ championship. They look really, really strong. Barcelona moving up and you see it already here. They are now even ahead uh, in the chances for winning the champion, uh, championship ahead of Real Madrid because they have a slightly better rating and things are starting to get to get, uh, come, come, come together. Um, lots of movement in the midfield. And we see a very uneven uh, table still in Spain. And this is not going to be resolved until I think the end of February, maybe even March, until we have the first even table in Spain of the season, which is something that personally bug bugs me a whole lot. So uh, if we adjust the table, we, st we see even more how Atletico is separating themselves from, from the rest. Um, we see Real Madrid and Barcelona are behind. Um, if you look at the bottom, I think uh, you, you can see that Elche still is whole holding the advantage over Real Madrid, although they have been falling down now. Um, and also Sona Huesca rather looking bad. Elche having quite a positive performance. You see the big green bar. Uh, similar bars are Granada, who again are outperforming themselves, and of course Atletico Madrid. Um, so yeah, rather interesting standings there. And let's also look at the expected standings. If you've seen my videos for Serie A and Bon Bon Bundesliga, you already have seen what this is. But I will again, for one time, run through it. Uh, 
I sorted the teams by the expected finish, meaning I simulated La Liga based on the strength ratings uh, 10,000 times with the current results already taken into account. And if we do so, uh, you see the average rating, this is a, a light blue bar, is the, the average amount of points that they will get from these simulations. So Atletico Madrid would get an average finish with 85 points, uh, Barcelona with 78 and Real Madrid 77. So those two very much uh, head to head, but you see Barcelona has the highest rating in the league. Uh, more or less the market value of uh, Lionel Messi makes that one. Um, so I do this 10,000 times. And of course, I get a whole kind of range of points. And this is what you see with the 5%, 50%, 95%, 5%. So uh, for Atletico Madrid, in 90% of the cases, uh, the finishes were between 75 and 94 points. So you get kind of a range there too. Uh, so for Barcelona, it would be 69 to 86. For Real Madrid, 68 to 86. So uh, slightly below. And the 50% is, ba is basically the bar. 50% uh, of the simulations were below this value, 50% above. This is not necessarily the average. And if you see this, there, again, uh, we can very nicely see that Atletico Madrid is on top. Then Barcelona and Real Madrid are the next tier. Then there's the tier with Sevilla, Villarreal and potentially Real Sociedad. And then the rest, which is outside of the European spots at the moment. However, uh, there's a spot for the uh, cup winner that might actually add, shift things a little bit. The rest here is basically midfield. Uh, and I also put here, with then to to the LVC, Elgin, where it's kind of already a bit uh, dropping off. Uh, 30 points for Uesca might seem at the moment maybe uh, much, but they have 12 points. Um, it is not entirely conceivable, uh, inconceivable, but you know, uh, it assumes a consistent strength rating uh, that they have having Uesca has actually played quite well. And we see that Elche is actually the one who will come down. Um, the most important feature of this one are these green uh, shapes to the right, which basically gives you the distribution for the spots with the very left one being uh, the first, uh, fi finishing first. So you see Atletico Madrid as a big dark green um, rectangle, which means, yeah, they are very, very likely to finish in first place. And then the second, third, and then until the first part, that's fourth place. Then you see the bars, the next, uh, the first one separates Champions League from um, uh, Europa League and the next one Europa League from Europa Conference League spot. And then uh, you have this where there's no European spaces and the last bar is then uh, going into relegation. And we, we can see it really what I, I just say. You see it actually visually and you see that Real Sociedad is more going to the Europa Conference League and Villarreal and Sevilla dodging it out for the uh, last spot. Then this broad midfield, I, I would say the relegation zone starts somewhere around Valencia and um, Alaves and also Suna, those three potentially A bar, but you see the A bar already has to wait a little bit more towards the middle. So uh, it looks overall rather clear in Spain already with half the season played. Next round, yeah, it's not that easy. We have a Spanish Super Cup, which I will not pay any attention to. This is a bogus tour to, to tournament, uh, although there might be a classical come coming. I'm not going to pay any attention to that. I say this right out, uh, even if it's played in Andalusia this time. We already had two games from, from the Rap played uh, in December, namely uh, Real Madrid Athletic Club and Barcelona Real Sociedad. So the remaining games are being played and yeah, what sticks out? Alaves against Sevilla, Eibar against Atletico Madrid, Valencia Osasuna, maybe. Those are, the in those are what I would call maybe the interesting ones. Betis against Celta. That sounds like goals being scored. Um, so this is played um, in a week. So on the weekend, it's all about the Super Cup. So we have this in a week, uh, midweek, and then we also get the weekend round. And I might actually squeeze the two rounds all together. Um, and there we get, this is the round 20. This is the first one of the kind of return legs, if you feel like. They have been also shuffled around quite a bit. Alaves, Real Madrid, looks like a classic trap game there. We have a um, Andalusian Dar with Sevilla and Cadiz. Cadiz, Cadiz. Um, then Atletico Madrid, Valencia is a big name matchup. And yeah, I think those are the ones uh, Barcelona should, should get a win at Elche. Uh, League uh, 
it was all played at the same time. I mean, it's wonderful, but um, <laughs> I wonder why <laughs> in, in, in a way. Uh, the big takeaway from it is that Marseille is dropping points. Uh, PSG had a rather easy win over Brest. 3-0, so Poch getting his first uh, win. And then Olympic Lyonnais could not afford to lose if they wanted to get at least, uh, you know, the winter king. Uh, title, which is not a title, but um, they found themselves 2-0 down to Rennes and Rennes fully deserving so. But then in the last 15 minutes they scored twice and get the draw, although Rennes that very, very late could have well won it. But with that, um, Lyon remains top of the table, a point ahead. Lille also got, got, got a win. So the top three are within a point. You know exactly what this means, that PSG is gonna uh, right, right away with that one. Um, Marseille still has two games left, so uh, let's quickly look at the adjusted table where you see Marseille would move up into the fourth, uh, the Europa League spot. There, PSG is still kind of a disappointing performance, it's a little red bar. Uh, as for positive performances, I mean, Marseille is outperforming their ra rating for sure. Angers and Montpellier definitely there as well, and I think also Brest you can count there. So this is how it would look when we adjust by uh, games. So we divide the uh, points uh, by, the, by the number of games. But I also, also want to show you the expected um, table. And there is, of course, all PSG. And you see, or with trading PSG, also favorite to win the title. I mean, they are well within range. Lyon to finish second, Lille finish third. That's the most likely finish. Monaco, uh, which we haven't talked a lot, a lot about, is actually at the moment ahead of Marseille. Uh, but they are very, very similar. Uh, with Marseille actually having a little bit less because they have a much uh, worse rating and Rennes might miss out on Europe and on the bottom uh, Nantes might get in there but it's still a little bit out but it's really very much Dijon, Lorient and Nîmes that are in danger and I finish in Portugal, uh, no, the next round I always want to go ahead to Port Portugal already. Uh, Montpellier, Mon Monaco on Friday sounds like an interesting one. Uh, PSG Angers, I think, will be uh, easy. Uh, Lille against Reims and uh, Lyon against Metz. I think there's nothing really that outstanding uh, there. Now we move to Portugal, where all the big boys won. Braga wins, Sporting wins, Benfica win and Porto win. So uh, not many changes on top of the table. However, if you just look at the bottom, not that we go much into it. Everything is so freaking close together. I mean, uh, 11 is last place, 15 is uh, seventh. So a win can carry a whole lot. And this is what happened to Farense, who uh, record, record event, we went from last all the way to 13th. So very, very even there. And then the top is taking all the points. And we see this also, um, the adjusted standings. We don't have to really adjust much here uh, because it doesn't make any change. change we just see the sporting is the positive surprise. But if we go now by the expected standings, um, we see the same pick picture. We have the top three are, are on top uh, with Porto uh, slightly ahead of sporting and then Benfica. Uh, Braga also on to finish fourth. Uh, tussle for the final spot between uh, Guimaraes and Ferreira. But as again, the cup winner could, if Porto Sporting and Benfica win that, then everything shifts down a little bit. Uh, there will then be a Europa League spot, otherwise those are Europa Conference League spots. And then you see how from Santa Clara to Tondela, it's very, very clear. And I think Santa Clara, Rio, Ave are probably just not going to in the relegation battle. But everything from Gilles Vicente on half the league, more than half the league, could potentially get relegated. It's really, really, really tight in Portugal. And the most exciting thing is that on Friday, we finally get the big one, Porto against Benfica. That will go a long way. It's a must win, I think, for Benfica uh, to stay in the title hunt because they had uh, an up and down season so far. So that is definitely a huge matchup to look forward to. And I finally will pay a little bit more attention to the Portuguese league, uh, given that there's nothing, not, not much happening in Spain, except the Super Cup that I'm not interested in. In any case, drop a line below uh, what you thought about the games. I have winter conditions out there, so I really hope this video goes up on time. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists uh, that you might give interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my uh, channel to give you all the updates, all the things that rotate in my soccer universe. And with that, 
Have a great day. Thank you.